What's going on, podcasters and YouTubers? This is Hav here, one of your hosts from the Real Fan Review. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're coming with you to episode 56. With me today, we got my boy Sanj. Good evening, everybody. As always, it's a pleasure to be with you. We got my brother B. Bonjour, mon ami. Yeah, he's still attracting all our French uh, podcasters there. Okay. <laughs> Man, I, I was I was hoping for a little Italian or something tonight. Like, oh, buongiorno. Uh, buongiorno, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got our man in the chair, Al, today. How's it going, everybody? And maybe joining in today, we might have Reed back, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays along. And today, man, what we're going over is the things what's going on with Flash. We're going to go over the Extraction trailer that came out for Netflix with Thor and the writers from an Endgame. Uh, we're going to talk about some scenarios there, put ourselves in situations and see what these guys come up with. And then I think we're also going to do uh, there's some Ant-Man 3 rumors, so we'll talk about all that today. So let's get right into one of the big things that happened this week was... Ezra Miller bugged the fuck out. <laughs> I I want to believe yeah. it was a pr- I, I want to believe it was a prank, but uh, it was not a prank video. It looks like this is something that happened. I believe he was in a bar in Iceland, got into a little argument there with one of the fans that was uh, I guess harassing him, and uh, there's a video of him giving her a little choke <laughs> and bringing her down. <laughs> you want to fight? <laughs> uh, we don't condone that, but uh, not at yeah, all. It's kind of crazy, man. So I just wanted to know, like, what you guys think of all that? What's going on? What should happen? Should he be removed from the Flash? Should he be removed from, you know, further movies that he's about to be on, including, I believe, he's part of the Harry Potter prequels there. But um, first of all, what do you think about him as far as what's going on with what he did there? It's a bit ridiculous. Um, and I. I think, you know, when you I, I know I'm not a celebrity. So I don't know what goes through their minds when in my when, mind you're a celebrity. Thank you so much. I don't I don't know what goes through their heads when, you know, fans are constantly at their beck and whim, you know, they're constantly there and you can't really go out into the public without someone noticing you. I don't know what that does to your psyche, you know, so I, I don't know what was going through his head and if he thought that was okay. Um right, right. but uh, the whole act of it, you know, going forward was very uncalled for and very weird, you know, whether he was being playful or not, because as far as I know, like, it wasn't a, a police altercation thing, like, you know, police didn't have to get involved, and the fan was, like, fine, but it was just yeah. the videotaping of it and the person behind the camera who was just wasn't okay with it, so, mm-hmm. like, I don't know what led to that beforehand and what was afterwards, we only saw it was on the video, but right. it was just very weird without the context of knowing if this was a joke and or if it was a joke, maybe was that a bit too far, you know? I got mm-hmm. you, man. Yeah, now, I didn't see the whole video, but the part of it I saw, and it, it very well may be the whole clip, I, I heard laughing while it was happening. So Right, yeah. I think it was like a like a bunch of people laughing in the background. Yeah, or, so there was laughing. Yeah. I mean, he grabs her slowly. So it wasn't like like if she really... I mean, and again, I don't condone... If this was meant to be malicious and he was really meaning right. to hurt her, it's a different story. But just what, having watched it the one time, he approaches her slowly, grabs her slowly, and even the takedown was slow. And then I'm like, combine that with hearing laughing in the background and the fact that if you're recording this because you see he's attacking her, why do you stop the video immediately right there? Like, if you're showing, oh, look what he's doing, what he's doing, why didn't record you the whole thing? Yeah. Record, yeah. Why do we see it stop right there? So, I, I mean, I want to give the grain of salt because I, I don't want to believe that this guy's that stupid that in the middle of a crowded area, he's going to attack someone Mm -hmm. for something that didn't seem serious right before it. So I want to say it's somebody trying to hype up because they got him on video doing that. Right. Right. So they put, so they put it out there and everybody's running with it. But if it's for real, then yeah, no, take him out the movie. You don't, you know, you, I mean, granted it's going to be a a suicide story because it's so limited, but I mean, if it comes out that there's other witnesses that say, no, the video doesn't show the whole story, you know, X, Y, Z happen, get him out the show. Yeah. It, it, it's not needed. He could be How replaced. What about you, Sanj? What do you think, Sanj? I didn't, I didn't see the video, so I really, I really can't comment on it. So, 
you know, I heard I heard that something happened, but I didn't I didn't I didn't look at the video, so I don't want to I don't want to comment one way or the other. Right. It I was you, I, I I think you know from watching the video, the one thing that like was weird was not that even if it was like staged, like him just playing pretend and this and that, but it was like the way the demeanor in which he said it to the person, like oh you want to fight, like you know like this and that, like it seemed kind of playful on his end, but like I said, you, you don't get the context of what happened beforehand like you know like hey we're gonna joke around kind of a thing as we take a video or take a photo of you because it's so cool to see you like you don't really get the context you just see oh you want to fight puts his hand on her neck and like takes her down you know so like you don't right. see you just right. see the cameraman going whoa 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 you know like so mm-hmm. there's no real context so it's it's really hard to even give like a straight opinion like whether like this guy's a bad guy or not because you don't really get what happened yeah, I hate you guys, man. So I mean, like in the in the worst case scenario where they do take him off of these movies because of everything, you know, hopefully it's not. Hopefully it's a joke. Hopefully it's something that didn't happen. It's just out of context and things like that. But you know, if worst case scenario it is real, then he's got to go. He's got to get off of mm-hmm. these movies. And yeah. um, you know, I mean, not to try to make light of his situation or that situation or her situation. It's what do you guys think as far as either. Because it seems like DCEU is kind of almost like redoing everything. They're doing it. They're just washing away everything, just doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. I know we like the Flash because the way the Flash was played in Justice League was pretty, pretty funny, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah. would you? Is there an, another actor you would want to see take over that role? Would you want it just to be recast? Or Grant Gustin? Grant Gustin, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he does a great job as the Flash on the TV show. I think All it right. would be a really cool thing to use him you know i know it's kind of weird because you've already introduced the flash in these two movies you actually brought ezra miller into the tv show for crisis on infinite earths so i know he's been introduced but i think if this is the route that they have to go in i think they already have a flash who is pretty good at the job gotcha man how about you and i actually i was just gonna say actually that episode on crisis of infinite earths earths um, that I think actually would open the door to bringing um, Grant in because of the fact that now you made it that there were multiple flashes, they saw each other. So you right. actually kind of introduced them to the DCEU without even intending to. Yeah. Gotcha, man. Sign yourself, man. I'm, I didn't really watch The Flash even, even, on, um, even on TV, so I, I wouldn't know who to say. Because um, I, I really don't follow the flash <laughs> story that I, i'm i know i'm not giving you much to work with <laughs> it's, all, it's all good man listen i think the one thing that goes you know against i'm, I'm gonna is... go to my default christian bale maybe i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I think run that, barry okay. run <laughs> i don't think they can go grant gustin man because i think if they go grant gustin they're, they're kind of like hooked to putting all the people from the show on you know what i mean they can't just take grant gustin and then put him in there and then we have to forget about you know all the other actors that are on the show already it's gonna it'll make it too weird i think so i think oh, they nice. have to go either oh have go for grant it gustin visit another earth and say this is something that happens by accident he doesn't control it like he usually does so then right. you don't have to bring those guys there because now this is grant gustin figuring out what the problem is and now he's got to get back to his own earth I got you, man. Makes sense, man. All right, man. That's just one topic there. Our next topic is going to be this extraction trailer that they premiered this week. It's for Netflix. Usually, I get a little nervous with the Netflix stuff because I'm starting to think like, hey, why isn't it in theater? Why is Netflix <laughs> got it? You know? The, theater, the theaters died. <laughs> so it looks like this extraction thing is made by the people from uh, the Russo brothers, pretty much from the Avengers Endgame, Infinity War, you know, Captain America. So I'm wondering, are you guys like amped up to see something like this? Because after I saw the trailer, the trailer was actually good. You know, Chris Hemsworth doing his thing. I like the interesting premise. And is it, is it in India or is it like a fight between Indian and Bangladesh uh, drug lords? Um, it might be in India. They didn't really say where the location was, right. but it looks like it could be India or Bangladesh. I love I love it's just a brand new location and not just yeah. drug lords in Mexico again. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I like I like that. I like the interesting play. Yeah, on, they're like, on, hey, on. there's brown people in Asia we can use as villains. Go <laughs> go for it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, man. I mean, I don't know. What did you guys think of the trailer? I personally enjoyed it. I'm actually looking forward to seeing it on on, on Netflix. The action scenes look really good um, in it, and it to me it looks like Thor meets Rambo. Like he's playing a combination of <laughs> Thor and Rambo. So I, I'm so there for it. So there. Thambo. Thambo. <laughs> <laughs> or or roar. <laughs> I'm roar. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it looks fun. I mean, I think this is going to be a wave of things that's going to happen now, you know, that streaming is our source of entertainment currently. So, like, you have the Russo brothers. Like, that's a great pair of people to be writing a movie for whatever, whether it's in a movie theater or for streaming. So I think this is going to be something that we do enjoy because it's from filmmakers who are – not to downplay any other filmmakers. I think this is filmmakers who understand – the level of action and level of storytelling that they need, that people need, kind of a thing, you know, and the way they took uh, Infinity War and Endgame and wrote it for, you know, to, mm -hmm. to complete this 22, you know, 20 year cycle, you know, they they wrote that movie specifically to tie up loose ends, to make stories, to create bigger stories. So I right, think right. their method of storytelling and, and script writing is gonna lead to something that's really awesome. Gotcha, man. Now, Al, am I right? Did you watch uh, Twenty One Bridges? Yeah. So I mean yeah. that was written by the Russo brothers featuring the Black Panther. So wow. yeah, no, it was, was I, I didn't. It, no, it was a good movie. Definitely All was right. a good movie. Um, I didn't know the Russo brothers did it though. Um, yeah, they wrote it or even just wrote it. But uh, it was a good movie, good twist, um, great acting. Um, a little unrealistic in terms of certain of the procedures, but it's a movie. So again, you have to uh, suspend reality uh, for some of it. But um, it was a great, a great movie. Um, it gave me another um, uh, avenue to look at Chadwick Boseman. Because, um, right. I mean, we saw him in Black Panther. He did a, another movie called um, Something the King, or I forgot where he, his sister, he comes back to America because his sister was killed. Um, and he basically avenges that and so forth. Yeah. That was a great movie. That was a good movie if you haven't seen that. Um, so it just shows his breath and his 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 skills as an actor are increasing it or he's able to actually finally display them got to man gives you more confidence to see this movie because of that movie yeah yeah i, I just thought, i just wonder what made them choose chris hemsworth over everybody else from the group i think for yeah, just this movie. They, they they're comfortable <laughs> working with with him from all the movies that they've done so they're gonna, like we're gonna take marvel actors and put them <laughs> in other movies right they took chadwick boseman not chris hemsworth Next well, one's the, I mean, those are those are pretty hot <laughs> actors right now. So I mean, exactly, they're they're, they're big draws at at not I was about to say the box office, but yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah man, definitely interesting scene. I think the movie's coming out April twenty fourth on Netflix. So yep. once that movie comes out, I'm sure we'll watch it and we'll give our review on it and everything. So it should be interesting. Yep. Um, there was some news about Ant Man three this week. They were saying that Ant Man three is possibly going to have the beginnings of the Young Avengers. Now, Brandon, I know you know a lot about the comic books and stuff like that. Yeah. All, all I know that's in the Young Avengers is this guy who looks like Captain America. So <laughs> <laughs> that, which is it's it, it's interesting because the the Marvel Cinematic Universe has gone in a different direction than most of you know the comics went. So if they do the Young Avengers, I mean, obviously uh, his daughter is uh, you know a Young it's Avenger. Actually. She's also. Yeah, she's also been an Avenger as well, so I think that's a I think that's where that tie-in is going to start coming in in a, in a sense. Um, there was, I mean, in the original Young Avenger comic slash like movie that they did after the Ultimate Avengers movies, uh, you know, Cat and Black Widow had a kid, so you know he had his digital shield kind of come up, and he was very like spyish in the way he moved. You know, the Hulk, old man Hulk was in there. Um, right. it was like Tony Stark's kid with Pepper Potts. So like they all had Avenger family. So like Black Panther and Storm had a kid and he kind of took up the mantle of Black Panther. Thor had a daughter, you know, so she took over kind of the thing as, as Thor's like, uh, earthly liaison. Cause Thor kind of closed Valhalla and, and, um, and everything. So like no one could enter Asgard. Right. So like okay. he disappeared and never came back. So he, his daughter, you know, he left her on earth to learn the same lessons that he did kind of a thing um so it that's the old take so i'm wondering how they would kind of introduce kids in this take of said superheroes considering some of them aren't around anymore 
Yeah, man. Well, I mean, right now, from what I've read, it was going to be, uh, oh, man, what's the girl from Black Panther? Shuri? Yeah. So Shuri. It's be Shuri. 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 Spider-Man. Um, the new Hawkeye. Uh, the, the two kids from, from Scarlet Witch. Mm-hmm. And then they're thinking big. about Ironclad or Ironheart, one of the two there. Oh, that'd be really cool. Right. So, and then Stature is going to be the one that is going to show up in, in Ant Man three, or it's going to be a part of Ant Man three, where they introduce these young Avengers. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Sanj, do you know anything about the young Avengers? Are you looking forward to something like that, or I just want to see the story continue. So, this is exciting for me to hear, like you know, possibly young Avengers being introduced to it. You know, just expanding that universe. You know. Definitely, man. How about you, Even Ironheart? Yeah, no, I knew nothing about the Young Avengers, so it'll be great to just learn it as they're putting it on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think it's just very interesting right now with the MCU because it's like they have this, like, these theories. Everybody has these theories going on that, like, these Dark Avengers are coming now or the Thunderbolts are coming now and now the Young Avengers are coming now. Oh. So it's like these, these three groups right now that they're trying to come up with or we don't know if it's true or not, but... I don't know, man. Yeah. It's just like a real exciting thing. I just I'm waiting for you know the 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 Disney Plus shows, and I'm waiting for you know Black Widow movie right now. So hopefully that gives us some insight into what they're going with, what they're doing. The one you know? that I want to see is Doctor Strange too, because every rumor, ha- every time I hear of that movie, there's somebody yeah. new coming out in it. Uh, the latest I heard was Keanu Reeves is going to be brought into it as Ghost Rider. Oh wow! So, oh, that'd yeah. be so cool. And and somehow they're they're Whoa. gonna introduce yeah <laughs> somehow they're introducing um X Men through it as well. Forget. It. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. So every time I hear about that movie, there's somebody new getting brought in from it. Also, I heard uh, maybe Spider Man Tobey Maguire might be in there because of the uh, the director Sam Raimi. Okay. So, yeah. See. Interesting. That'd be interesting because they they did bring up. Um, they they brought up Doctor Strange in kind of like a reference in one of the Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire. I believe it was the second one. So that'd be a cool like, you know, callback and kind of right. visit, you know. <laughs> Definitely, man. And then the last bit of news we got for today, man, is the uh, so you guys heard of My Spy with uh, what's his name? Uh, I, Batista, Dave Batista. Batista, yeah. Mm. yeah. So My Spy was supposed to be coming out within the next couple of weeks here. Of course, you know what's going on with the quarantine and uh, you know shutting down everything. But mm. uh, ends up Amazon went and purchased it. Amazon, oh, wow. so we're, we're gonna take that one. We'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're gonna Amazon Prime it. And just wanted to know, I mean, from my spy, the way that the you know trailers looked, it was basically him as a spy, and then there was a young girl who saw him and caught him, and is now included in his plan of being a spy and trying to capture somebody or some organization. It looks like a comedy. It looks funny and interesting. I'm definitely willing to see it. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys got Amazon or Amazon Prime. I'm pretty sure I everyone's do. I do. wife yeah. girlfriend has Amazon Prime. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm wow. looking forward to seeing some, it. Some of y'all, some of y'all wives got girlfriends. Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> like, so, I know somebody's wives, girlfriends got it. <laughs> well, wives for us, you know, girlfriends for, for B-Dog. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. uh, being do you, so you guys looking, looking to see it? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't gonna go to the theater, but <laughs> I probably Give yeah. Not, watch. <laughs> yeah, and after Stuber, I, he impressed me with with his comedy, so. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think he has pretty good acting chops. I mean, yeah. the way he plays Drax, even, you know. Oh, Drax I, is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brandon Brent, Brent just turned invisible. <laughs> yeah, for a second. Sorry, sorry, viewers. I'm still here. <laughs> but no, I agree. Dave Dave Batista, he's he's pretty cool. Like. He he said it in his interviews uh, regarding like I I think it was either Volume Two or Infinity War, you know that he's like you know as long as I'm like free to kind of like do some stuff, he's just like I can really find a lot of joy in playing the roles. He's just like I don't really like being stuck down to this one thing and not being uh, kind of having the grounds to do more. So I think this is a result of him allowing to do more, you know. Yeah, man. Well, we'll look forward to it, man. I don't know when that one's gonna come out because they just bought it off of Amazon. They just bought off, bought the movie this this past week, so they haven't released like a date that they're gonna release it on Amazon Prime. So we're waiting for that, man. 
And uh, just also wanted to catch up with you guys, man, because I really haven't talked to you guys this week and stuff. Any chance you guys got a chance to watch some movies or catch anything online? Uh, I think I watched Molly's Game yesterday because uh, Al's recommendation last week on it. Yeah, Molly's Game is good. Really good. <laughs> All right. Do you know who the 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 douchebag who who's in the movie with her that like like who is he supposed to be? What actor he's supposed to be? Yeah, Tobey Maguire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's who he's supposed that's to have been. Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Because <laughs> she wrote uh, a book and she just didn't tell who the people were. But apparently, Tobey Maguire was the douchebag. <laughs> oh, wow. I read that a mile away. I was like, who can Michael Sarah play? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tobey Maguire. <laughs> but I yeah, can't even lie. Good. That was a really good role for Michael Sarah, of all people. <laughs> he killed it, man. He killed it on that yeah. one. <laughs> oh, man. How about you, Sanj? Man, I know you've been busy with all this stuff, yeah, man. You this, got a chance to watch anything? This week, I did not get to um, I did not get to watch uh, movies this week and catch up with any movies. So, unfortunately, no. Hey, yeah, man. No worries, man. How about you, Al, man? You got a chance to catch anything? Yeah, we um, well, I watched on Netflix that, that uh, movie called The Platform. I don't know oh, if yeah, any of y'all caught it. It's, um, it's a movie where it's called. It's a prison called the Hole, mm-hmm. and there's um, multiple levels. And in your floor, it's two prisoners per level. And what happens is, through the middle of the floor comes a, a platform with food. So it comes from the top platform all the way down. So you get a so each. It spends only a few minutes on each level. So you get to eat whatever you can, and then it moves down to the next level. Mm. So the farther down you are the less food there is left for you to eat. So it's all about how people survive. Like if you're on level 120, you know, because nobody Sounds knows. deeper I mean. than just the movie. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's supposed to be like a representation of like society and so forth right. and those with and those without. But um, it's very good. It's, I mean, you, it's not gory, but it's definitely graphic. So be prepared if wow. you're going to watch it, for, to, that you're going to watch something graphic. Um, and then we caught uh, the Brahms, the boy too. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know you liked the first one. Yeah, no, I liked the first one, and I was interested in watching it to see how they spun it because the first guy dies and they broke the doll. So I was, I, I spoiler alert. Had, yeah. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought they were gonna do like totally okay. This has nothing to do with it. We're retconning one all the way and so forth, but they do tie it in. So it was actually pretty. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be, just based on the reviews and so forth that it got. Right. Uh, but it's definitely a good watch if you like. Um, not, I, I won't say scary, scary, but there's a lot of jump scares, so it's it is going to scare you. Yeah. And I thought Katie Holmes did a good job. That's I, mean, awesome, I haven't man. seen her in many movies, but she did a good job in this one. Yeah, man, I'm kind of like on the same boat as Saj, man. This beat was a little, little crazy this week, so I couldn't uh, really catch any movies. Tree can try to do biology homework and also do the work <laughs> plus the kids. Yeah, no time. So, <laughs> but anyway, man, listen. One of the things that we do on this podcast is we try to bring up some different ways of talking about movies. And one of the things we do is something called scenarios, where we take ourselves and put ourselves in a scenario, or you know, put ourselves in a situation to see how we would handle it. And it always ends up being funny. Like I know one of the things that came out, Sanjay said that one of his funniest things was my fear of. Big tricycle. <laughs> I'm going down again. <laughs> so I got a couple of scenarios from things that I saw this week because I saw on YouTube a lot of people are doing this whole like MCU rewatch. So we got like people like the new rock stars, uh, uh, awesome emergency, awesome or something like that. A lot of people are doing rewatches of MCUs and giving their takes on everything. So it, it kind of brought back some memories for me to watch some of these things. And I, I, I wanted to ask the fellas really quick. So the first scenario we're going to put you in is you are a superhero and you are in a news conference, but as yourself, as Al, as B, as Sanj. And in the news conference, they're asking you these questions like, come on. We know it's you, you know, like just like at the end of the Iron Man. Like, so you're saying you don't know who that guy was. And, you know, we all have families. We all have different things going on in our lives. Would you tell them who you are or would you keep the secret? 
Sanch. I mean, you- realistically, since if if I didn't if I didn't have a family and I didn't have you know if I was like an orphan and like you know I didn't have anybody that really cared about me that could right. get hurt or anything like that, I'd totally be like, yeah. I'm Iron Man. Chill. <laughs> 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 <But, but, laughs> you know, I'd, I'd take the uh, take guidance from from Batman himself that you don't wear the mask to protect yourself. You wear the mask to protect your loved ones. Ooh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, uh, I'm gonna wait a minute. I'm gonna give you a little heart there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> But I just want you to know in that news meeting, Sanjay would be the absolute worst. He'd be like, no. <laughs> I'm like, totally not Iron Man. Totally. <laughs> Al, how about yourself, man? You uh, you telling them who you are or are you keeping it a secret? Yeah, I think I'd have to go with keeping it a secret on that one. Um, just for not wanting that that attention. You know, like to Sanjay's point, you know, there's more than... Just you, and then not only that, just like when you're not wanting that attention, you're gonna get that attention. You know, yeah. you're out trying to grab a cup of coffee, yeah. you just pick up something to eat. And like, well, I got robbed yesterday. Where was you? <laughs> 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 so yeah, nah. So I, I would keep it a secret. All right, Brad. How about yourself, Brad? You keeping it a secret? Ah oh, man. <laughs> uh, so I just watched Homecoming. And I got, you know, to the end when Tony Stark asks Spider-Man if he wants to be a part of the Avengers. Like, we got 50 news conference, you know, 50 people in the news conference out there waiting for you. You know, let's get you set up. And he's like, nah. It was just he's a like, test, B. It was just a test. <laughs> it was just a test. He's like, nah, I, I think I'm going to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And I'm sitting there like, damn, that's a nice suit, though. <laughs> that's a nice suit, though. <laughs> I guess, uh, I mean, I think in the same sense as San said, like, if there was no possible way someone I cared about could get hurt, you know, then fuck yeah, like, I'm whoever the fuck you need me to be, <laughs> like, but uh, I think in the context of, like, I got a lot of family everywhere I can't be, I, I think I'm going to hold back for a bit. I think out of the, the two things that, that Al and San said, man, that is going to be the reason why I'm going to keep it a secret also. I don't want someone coming up to me the next day being like, the fuck were you at? <laughs> <laughs> Giving you a call like, yo, I got to be somewhere. Can you fly me over? Like, <laughs> I know, right? I got that you job interview. Super pill- you do my superpowers <laughs> for like stupid stuff. Like, you can't go yeah. to the store right now. You, you can't go to the store right now. <laughs> That's like a mom calling you Javier, but uh, I got all these groceries. So I was like, come on, Javier. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, you're fighting Thanos. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I think Sanjay said it best, man. San- Sanjay definitely said it best. You don't wear the mask to protect who you are, you wear it to protect the others, man. So, yeah, it's a secret for me, too, man. That's awesome. <laughs> The next scenario, man, it was, uh, is it actually The Rock was answering questions on Instagram and they asked him, had he ever missed out on a role that he actually wanted? And apparently he was up for a role in Jack Reacher, but he didn't get it. You know, if you guys know Jack Reacher, Tom Cruise is the, the main actor in that movie. The Rock was was also trying out for that movie as to play the Jack Reacher character. And he said that it hurt him a lot because he really wanted the role. He thought he was, it was at a time where he was like, you know, ascending as his own star. And at the same time though, he said by not getting that role, it made him work harder. And he knew also there were certain things that, that he wouldn't be able to change because he wasn't who he was today. You know what I mean? Now he can say, I don't want to do that part. I don't like that aspect of the character. I would like to change it. He said in, you know, five years before that, he didn't have to say. He just had to be whoever they wanted him to be, right? Yeah. So I was thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, is there anything that that I missed out on that I wanted? And then realizing later on, like, damn, that's good I didn't do it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I was thinking hard and I couldn't really figure out something like that. Then I, I think I came up with like there was a job that I had working at a different hospital, and I had lost a job because I was being a knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> and I fought for that job back. You know, I, I went to HR, I did all these different things, I went to meetings, was trying to get my job back. But to be honest with you, the best thing that ever happened to me was losing that job because it gave me, I guess, more reasons to be better. 
you know, I didn't take the job seriously. I wasn't coming in on time. I was late. I was lax. I called out sick or whenever I felt like it. So being fired made me grow up. So that's one job that I'm glad I didn't get back because after that job, I was always 10 minutes early for every job after. So, yeah, man, that's my uh, I'm glad I lost it. <laughs> I was so mad when you lost that job, too, because like we used to go to lunch like three, four times a week, bro. Like that was rough. <laughs> I was sad. I was sad when you when you lost that job. Yeah, man, I love that job. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, how about you, Brandon, man? Anything for you that you, you kind of was like, oh, I really want it. And then later on you're like you know what i'm glad i didn't get that uh i think for me was in my last year in college uh i was presented with a lot more performing opportunities and it was towards the end of the year i was trying to make the call of what i wanted to do you know like i had a really i was like oh i'm about to get a diploma and i have no idea what i want to do (laughs) and uh i was presented by my my band director uh, opportunity to start teaching you know and he was just he he showed me all the avenues that i can go to start teaching that was he's like you know you can be a performer get your salary you know this and that he goes you'll have money don't worry about just performing and being on the road all the time and i i was just like oh well teaching i have no idea how to teach i'm not I'm, i have no idea what to do how to work with kids any of that stuff and i got presented with the opportunity to start performing more you know and kind of just go out there and just perform and i i thought about it and i was all about wanting to perform because you know that was like my whole goal was like to be a band benevolent divine that was my thing and all that benevolent and divine benevolent yeah. divine that was my band that was me <laughs> and i was all about it and i you know i said to myself i got hundred and thirty thousand dollars in loans coming out and i can't be very uh lackadaisy about this so i went down the route of you know talking to my band director more about teaching and from there, you know, I, I developed a huge passion right away of teaching. You know, I had from That's someone awesome. who had no idea how to teach yeah. to just jumping and doing it. And now I have a pretty good reputation as a teacher on the island, you know, as a music teacher and as someone people can go to for help and knowledge. Me, the person who had no idea how to do it in the, in the get go, people come to me for help, you know. So I think, you know, looking back on there, I'm, I'm, I'll always choose that teaching opportunity. That's great, man. You and me still got to make a song, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you not listen, Hop? It's over. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no doubt, man. Ow, man. Anything you ever look back at and like, damn, I'm glad I didn't do that shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, right around the time when I had my daughter... And we were start, you know, obviously when you have kids, that whole big, uh, you know, daycare, childcare. Uh, uh, once my wife went back to work, what were we gonna do with who's watching, you know, our daughter and so forth? Yeah. A position at another um, company had come up. Now I've been with my company over 20 years. I'm not one to jump ship because, uh, you know, the grass looks greener, so to speak. Um, you know, my company's treated me very well over my career. You know, I've had some bumps, but they were my bumps. I caused the bumps. Who was, has it? Who yeah. has it? <laughs> but um, but this position came up, and because of the flexibility, the uh, the the hours that it was going to give, there was a slight bump in pay, uh, but more so the convenience of the hours were like, wow, you know. Right, made you think. It's it's yeah, it's gonna it's gonna satisfy everything we need. It's gonna leave, leave me available for for watching our daughter and so forth. Um, but something said, um, don't do it. Like one of the feedbacks my wife gave me was, you know, you've been with your company too long. You're going to go there and be the new guy. Think about it. So, you know, that thought kept putting it in my head. And like another thought I was like, like, why am I jumping ship when I haven't even pursued options where I am? So I decided not to do it. And thankfully I didn't because within six months I heard that they had started cutting back on that department and being the new guy i probably would have been the first yeah yeah, i'd be the first guy out the door so some i'm glad that 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 voice came in my head and says you know what just just sit back and you know wait for something to come back (laughs) come see where you at and thank you shout out to wifey yeah (laughs) (laughs) don't let i won't let her know you said that (laughs) i will (laughs) (laughs) size brother man 
You know, that one for a lot of regrets, brother. So I want to know this one, man. This one I want to know about you, brother. <coughs> well, it it is interesting to hear everybody else talk about it because all all of all of it centered around everybody's career. Um, you know, and I was glad to hear that it was a, a centered around like career moves and things like that, and nothing to do with like family or you know spouse or anything like that because i you know i hear other people talk like you know especially like you you know you talk to people at work outside of you guys you know that's that's really only who i talk to right or um uh and you hear them oh you know there was there was a girl in college or whatever blah 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 and then you're like damn like you, you make sure your wife doesn't hear you say that or something like that. <laughs> so I, I'm so glad to hear like none of that, you know, from 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 us. And mine centers around um, my career as well. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know I have something of an ego, um, but uh, you know, coming out of coming coming out of college, I um, I had an idea of what I wanted and when I wanted it. Like, like to own property by a certain age, to be married by a certain age, to have um, at least a child by a certain age, to have a certain salary, everything, and to have a certain stature and status by a certain age, which I gave right. myself t- till 30. And I accomplished everything I wanted to do by 30 by the time I was 29, all right? And I, you know, up until that point, like I grinded, I grinded really hard, like going, going, full throttle, you know, all the, all the time. And when I got to the position I got to, I got complacent. Um, and I got, I got, I got, I got lazy because I was, I was, you know, feeling, you know, I was buying into my own hype at that point, because in my mind, I had just willed everything to happen, you know, just, right, with deter- right. just with determination. And that was, that was my ego kicking in. And, um, I still did that job very, very well. Like I, you know, in that sense, I did the job very well, but I got comfortable in that job as opposed to positioning my, to working to position myself to move up again and be in a better position to be able to say, um, you know, bring my own people on and help everybody else, you know, like the tide, you know, the tide makes everybody rise. Right. Right, Um, right. But I got very, very, um, you know, complacent, um, as far as my forward motion. And I figured, hey, I'm doing well, and I can just do this for you know the next 25 years or whatever it is, right? And then, um, and I figured, I, I'm I'm good with numbers. Once I show them numbers that work, yeah. And then, even though I showed them numbers that work, they still made a decision that was contrary to all the numbers, contrary to all the con- conventional wisdom, or or it, it was just a bad decision, right? You know, on paper, it looked like a bad decision, but again. There's a reason why you have people above you. They they have a be, they have a different picture that they're looking at, and somehow this didn't fit into it. And all of a sudden, um, that job didn't exist anymore. Right. And then, um, what happened over the next five years? I did get an opportunity to start my own business, and I was pretty good at that as well. Um, but the even but even starting your own business is really really hard, and when you have young kids and stuff like that, and the amount of time that you yeah, have right. to put in. That was not the time for me to be doing that just because like I just would never see the kids. So over the next five year period, like I really bounced around like I was in a different job like every year for five years. Um, And I was just really, really unhappy because in my mind, I had a certain view of myself. But here am I here I am bouncing from entry level position to entry level position, making less than 50 percent of what I was making at my peak. And like right. I was just such a rush to get back to where I was, and like I learned a lot of I learned a lot of lessons during that period as far as like being being knocked down and really having my my ego um, checked, and I really really would not give that up because now I'm I'm back on a track that I was before, but now I appreciate right. it a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's other there's and there's things I do differently also. Um, I wouldn't have become who I am today if I didn't if I didn't get knocked down like that you know and I became a lot more compassionate a lot more a lot more patient because I now I'm working on a daily basis with 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 you know people that have to do it the normal way as opposed to me like I I got head starts because of you know people I knew or uh, because I was able to show talent and and people just like hey I'm gonna bring you in and make you my my you know my apprentice or something like that you know so now I had right. to do it really had to do it you know on my own and 
then getting back into this is a former colleague who was also a mentor of mine. He had he had an opening and he actually called me. So it was again, I'm not doing it on my own, but now I'm much more cognizant of the fact that I'm getting so much help, you know, right. and, it, and I'm a completely different person at 39 than I was at 29. Completely, completely different. That's crazy, man. That's awesome, man. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for all y'all. Yeah, I'm happy for all you guys too. Yeah. Yeah. Except for Brandon not wanting to do the song no more. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to be Muddy J versus not versus, but featuring. Divine. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Fine. I'll make you do it still. <laughs> I got that one last album out. <laughs> Come Anyways, back. Come back album. Come back. Last one. Last one. My retirement. From nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, how many projects you can take on right now, bro. <laughs> no, I can't do no more. <laughs> All right, man. So our next scenario there, man, is going to be because of, of the last episode, we did this tournament. We got Denzel Washington and Tom Hanks coming out on top. And then Denzel, <laughs> number one on our list oh, there. Speaking of that, we had, a, we, had to, we had to make a correction. Um oh. Uh, so I was on a, a, a Skype uh, happy hour last night, and Nick, okay. a friend of the show, you know our friend of the show, Nick. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Nick. Um, he's now um, he's now one of our top listeners as well. Um, he was on the call, and he said he was listening to the to the to the March Madness um, uh, episode that we did last week, and he said he he, he wanted to throw something at the <laughs> at the screen or whatever when it, that he was looking at because when we were talking about Denzel not winning for his role in Glory. And he totally won for his role in Glory. He won for... Yeah, he, Nick was telling me that apparently he won. He won an award for his work in Glory. So we had to correct that. I promised him we'd correct it. All right, oh, okay. correct it. Oh. No yeah, doubt. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I just found it interesting that you know we're, you know, Nick is listening and we're having that effect where he's listening to something. And he's like, ah, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Dude, that happens a lot, man. I heard uh, we also have another fan that listens a lot, man. Mo, shout out to Big Mo. Big Mo. He sends me emails every once in a while. Goes, you guys forgot this. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Mo. Join the call, Big and, Mo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's get into this challenge. So listen, Tom Hanks came in second place, so he's gonna go first on this one. So it's Tom Hanks scenario, right? So here we go. In one of his movies, one of his famous movies, Forrest Gump, he goes, life is like a box of chocolates, right? And I'm trying to think, like, what kind of chocolate? <laughs> so I'm going I'm to ask you guys, if life is like a box of chocolate, to describe what you think, or if you have one for every person in here, right? So, like, when I think of Brandon, oh God, <laughs> I think of Hershey's, man. <laughs> You get what you you get what you see, right? <laughs> there is Brandon is just Brandon, and always has been Brandon, right? <laughs> so he's a Hershey's. <laughs> <laughs> Sanjay is a M and M's with peanuts because he looks normal, but he's a nutcase inside. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking Twix with you, brother. Twix. <laughs> I oh, think it's Twix, man. I I'm like I'm trying to think why Twix, but that's what comes to mind is like this guy's a Twix bar. <laughs> <laughs> Left or right? No, because there's layers. There's layers to him. <laughs> it's definitely layers to Al, man. You know, there's, there's layers. layers to him, you know, get that. You that, got your, you know, that, caramel that, nougaty crunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now the question, the big question though, is is he a left Twix or a right Twix? Ooh. Oh, that dude's a right Twix like a mobile. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, man, you don't have to come up one for all three of us. If you got one for one or you got one for three, you go for it. But <laughs> Al, man, what are you thinking out there, man? What's life like a box of chocolate? You could do it yourself or you could do anything you want, man. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I thought we were doing it for ourselves, so I only I, and I couldn't come up with one. I was going crazy. I was like. Um, so I, you know, I go to my wife, I go, would you, what would you say? She goes, white chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was yep. thinking it, but I mean, I didn't want to take it there racially. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you I'm, ain't I'm nothing just, but sugar, Al. You ain't nothing but sugar. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you ain't real. Sarge, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. man, what yourself, man? What do you think, man? If you if life was like a box of chocolates. If it's funny that you said I'm an M&M's with peanut, because like I would have said the Cadbury, you know, the Cadbury bars that they have, yeah. like the big ones. But I would like Cadbury with roasted almond because I'm like chocolatey, but I'm also nuts. Like I would have said the same exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, man. And Brandon, man, what's what about you, man? What you guys say, man? Like, all like all Lindor truffles. You all are all excellent and sweet and awesome. <laughs> 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 Lindor right. truffles. Right. I, I could have been a Rocher, I guess. Mm, that Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> As oh, my, my French friends would say, Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> all right man and then our last scenario for tonight man before we end the podcast up man is for our man denzel for winning last week congratulations mr washington and uh so for denzel what we're doing is uh you know he's had many roles like al said he has roles from the 80s all the way down to now and he's played many characters and you know, out of all the characters, you have the the role that he played in uh, the one he won the Oscar for. What was that movie? Oh, shoot. I can't forget training, it right training now. Training Day? You know, for Training Day. You got Man on Fire, you know. Oh, yeah. Man on Fire was crazy. You got Pelham, one, two, three. Or what was it, Pelham? I forgot the name. Yeah, it was it. Pelham, one, two, three, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right? And you got so many different movies that he's been in even the equalizer he's basically a freaking you know superhero you know so if there's all these denzels out there which denzel would you like take over and be like that's gonna be me and for some reason i got stuck between equalizer denzel washington and training day denzel washington because <laughs> they're, ba- they're basically the same character just one's one's a bad guy one's a good guy but it's the same character basically <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I just think the training day Denzel comes with a lot of pluses. <laughs> <laughs> and even Mendez has all those pluses. <laughs> Hold on. Here's <laughs> Ando. <laughs> So that's going to be me, man. What about you guys, man? Well, any Denzel character you would take off? You know, you got John Q. You got all these other movies. Glory from Al. I would say uh, Remember the Titans, uh, his role there, you know. Bastard. Yeah. Uh, I think I think as the movie version of, of that role and not the real-life version of the role. Uh, <laughs> just because uh, from what I understand of the real-life version of the role, he was a bit more racist. <laughs> Um, and I don't want to kind of discriminate anybody, but uh, I like the movie role version a lot better. Okay. <laughs> I'd want to be that one. <laughs> It'd be the movie version. I want to inspire and help these young athletes evolve and grow as people. There you go. Through my asshole right. ways. <laughs> <laughs> Sanj, man, who's, who's the Denzel character you're going to be? It, it, it would have been the Denzel character from uh, Remember the Titans as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Because that that character is a one one of the like one of my teachers that um, had a really big influence on me was um was uh um my band director Mr. Abel um ah uh, yes and uh, he's a very that character remind in 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 some ways of of Mr. Abel just very he came across very very rough very you know tough love kind of kind of guy but he also cared a lot like he cares about every month like he really sees all his students like his kids like that's how he is and like we're still in touch and and everything so um so yeah it would it, that, that that's the reason that's the reason for that too awesome man al man you're gonna finish us up tonight man what's denzel uh, character i was going through his list while you guys were talking about to see what movies and one of the ones that jumped out at me was um pelican brief when like an it's an older movie yeah um and i guess just because of the fact that I mean, in that movie, he he plays a, a reporter, and despite like all the dangers that were going to come from reporting the story he was going after, he still pursued the truth and getting it Absolutely. out there. So yeah, like yeah, I would, I admired that about that character that despite his own safety being at risk, he still wanted the truth to get out there. And um, I mean, granted, there's a ton of other characters that that he has played to your point, the guy, you know, remember the mm-hmm. Titans, that coach and so forth. Um, 
But that's the one that jumped out at me as I was going through his list of, of roles and so forth. All right, man, no doubt, man. So listen, man, I really appreciate you guys on all the answers, on the scenarios there. Uh, if we lack any more movie news, as usual, we'll definitely be doing <laughs> a couple more scenarios or questions and things yeah. like that, man. Listen, if you guys listen to Sanjay on the podcast in the beginning of the podcast, you know, he tells you you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. We're under The Real Fan Review. If you want to email us a subject, a, a topic, or a question, scenario, anything like that, you can email us at therealfanreview at gmail.com, or you can go to our website at therealfanreview.com. Listen, guys, we appreciate you listening to us. I see we have listeners in France now. We have listeners in Asia, also listeners in Europe. It's just amazing. So we just want to thank everyone for you know signing on and, and subscribing to our podcast. The YouTubes are going up as well so as far as subscriptions go. So you guys like the videos through Skype somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so really appreciate it, man. So listen, coming in from New York, we want to thank you and say, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a good night. See you next next week. There you go. Have a good night, everybody. Riverdale Chief.